Hey guys, welcome back. This is our fourth day in the study of 3rd John. We're going to cover uh, this man, Diotrephes, uh, and get into what he's talking about. We're going to be looking at verses 9 to 11 of 3rd John, so let's read through that. I wrote it in the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence, among them receiveth, uh, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not this, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil it hath not seen God. So we've talked about Gaius, and we've talked about how wonderful he was, how he walked in truth, uh, how John loved him in truth. We talked about his reliability for travelers and how he was faithful uh, and how his faithfulness was witness to, to the church, the uh, unbelievers, and to God. We talked about how he was a fellow helper in those itinerant preachers going around and taking care of their needs. But now we see the contrast. This is really why John is writing to Gaius in the first place is to say, hey, we've got a problem here. I need your help to begin to fix it. And that was this man, Diotrephes. He was, uh, well, he was mistreating some people. And this is what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at his, uh, at remembering treatment. Now that may sound like funny, like an odd uh, point to have, but it'll make sense. So we see first under remembering treatment that uh, we see Diotrephes' attitude. And really this is what it all starts with. Oftentimes uh, we fall into sin because of our attitude, our inward attitude affects our outward actions. We see his attitude in verse 9. says, I wrote unto the church, this is John speaking, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Apparently Diotrephes was uh, a, a leader in the church where uh, he lived, where Gaius lived. And he said, well, I'm going to be the ruler of this church. I'm going to take over, and my rule, my word is law in the church. And if you don't like it, well, you can get out. And that's not the biblical standard that we have in the New Testament. Uh, from Paul, we see in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, he says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than themselves. Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 3, says, talking about, pastors, elders, and bishops. He says, neither as lords over God's heritage, but being examples of the flock. He says, we're not, gonna, we're not to lord over you and command you and rule your life. No, we're going to be examples to you of what it is to be Christ-like. And in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 18, talking about Christ, it says, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he, Christ, is before all things that by him all and by him all things consist. And he, Christ, is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that is Christ, that in all things he, Christ, might have the preeminence. So Diotrephes was usurping Christ. He said, I don't care if Christ is the preeminent, the, the one who is before all things, who above who is above all things, who is the pinnacle of the church. I want to be that. And John says that is not correct. So we need to correct his attitude. Secondly, we see Diotrephes attack. Now Diotrephes knew that the, the apostles and the, the right teachers were teaching that Christ should have the preeminence. He knew what Paul and Peter and John were teaching and he attacked them. In verse 10, Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth. And these are the deeds, one, some of the deeds that he did. He prating against us with malicious words. And what does that mean, prating? Well, that means to accuse. The would get up and say, oh, John and Peter and Paul and all the other apostles, well, they don't know. And he would use malicious words. He would accuse them with words designed to hate and to harm and to tear down. That is not in lowliness of mind, esteeming others better than yourselves. Geotrophies was in the wrong here. He was praying against them with malicious words. We uh, see his attack. We see his actions. Uh, he didn't just talk about it, but in verse 10, and not content therewith, not content just to accuse uh, them with malicious words. 
Uh, neither doth he, he himself receive the brethren and forbiddeth them that would. So he says, hey, any itinerant preachers come by, don't come here. You're not allowed here. We don't want you here. Get out. And he tells his church congregation, well, you don't do that either. And if you do that, well, that's the final action there. He casts them out of the church. He says, if you allow those itinerant preachers to come in and you lodge them and you house them, you feed them, then you are out of the church. He was lording over them. He was saying, it's my rule or nothing. Get out otherwise. And that is not right. His actions, we see Geography's archetype. So he was setting an example. We see this in verse 11. John very clearly in one verse says, Gaius, here's the, the heart of the matter. Verse 11. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth Good is of God, but he that doeth evil has not seen God. He said, Diotrephes and his attitude and his actions are wrong. They are evil. He says, Gaius, don't follow Diotrephes. He is in the wrong. Don't follow after him. Stay far away from him. But instead, follow after God. Uh, follow in the truth. So we see Diotrephes' archetype. And then the last one here, we see Diotrephes accounting. I, I, would, I would love to have been a fly on the wall for this one. Verse, eight, or excuse me, verse 10, at the very beginning. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth. John says, Diotrephes, there's coming a day in which your actions will be held accountable, whether to me here in this life or ultimately to God. He says, there will be an accounting that will be done. Now, John would have come in, and yes, he would have loved Diotrephes as a fellow uh, brethren, a fellow believer in Christ, if Diotrephes, tru Diotrephes truly was, and he would have corrected him. But we need to understand that when error and when truth is not being taught, when error is being taught instead, we don't use gentle words. We are harsh with that because it is the very doctrine of the church, the doctrine of the Bible that we are dealing with. We are firm in that. We don't say, oh, well, Diotrephes, you really need to teach something else. And maybe we can let them come in and maybe, maybe you would be okay. No, he, John would have come in and in love corrected him. It's just what God does with us. Hebrews tells us that whom the Lord loves, he chastens, he disciplines. When we are in sin, God disciplines us. When we are in error and teaching falsehood, God disciplines us. And John would have done the same. It would have been, it would have been wonderful to see Diotrephes get his comeuppance, really. Because to see the truth win out is always a good thing. So make sure that you today, that your attitude is right. That you're not attacking the truth. That your actions, as Gaius's are, are walking in truth, as we've talked about, that you are setting a positive archetype, a positive example, and so that when the accounting comes, and now the Apostle John is not going to come to your house. He's, he's dead. He's in heaven already. But one day you will be presented before God, and you will give an account for every idle word you that you say in your life. We need to be careful and make sure that those words are profitable. Those words are truth, that we are walking in truth. So that is the difference between Gaius and Diotrephes, two very different people in the church. One was in the truth and one was in error. And one was beloved and uh, con con uh, commended for that. And one was condemned because of his error. So that's it for today. We'll get into uh, tomorrow with the last two points of uh, trustworthiness and reuniting and get into that. It's going to be a great study. Hope you guys are excited about that. But for now, have a great day. Thanks.